Hi, my name is Anthony Wong. I'm a cerebrovascular neurosurgeon here at UCLA, and one of the focuses of my clinical practice is Moya Moya. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Moya Moya is and what I do to treat it. If you have any questions at all during the course of my presentation, please feel free to tweet them to this hashtag listed here or to comment via Facebook. So the term Moya Moya, it means puff of smoke. It was a nickname given by the Japanese who first described it. And it was used to describe this characteristic hazy appearance of collateral vessels that form when the main branches of the internal carotid artery that supply the brain collapse. Here, you see the other side of the same patient, and you can see that moya moya is beginning to occur here, but it's not nearly so severe as on this side, where you don't see the main branches of the artery su supplying the brain at all. So the term moya moya is used to describe the angiographic appearance, the appearance on imaging, as you just saw. We use the term moya moya disease to describe a specific condition where moya moya occurs on both sides of the brain in a progressive fashion and there's no underlying cause that we can find. We use the term moya moya syndrome to describe when the same thing occurs but that there is an underlying cause. Some of the more common ones being sickle cell disease, trisomy 21, previous cranial irradiation. Moya Moya uh, is graded based on the Suzuki, Suzuki grade in uh, terms of uh, six levels of severity. Moya Moya, is, uh, Moya Moya disease is by definition progressive and it goes from grade one where you start to see collapse of some of the uh, vessels um, to grade two when you start to see some of the collateral uh, vessels forming in response to the uh, stenosis of some of the, of the main arterial branches to the brain. And it goes all the way out uh, to grade six where uh, the primary contributors to the brain circulation are completely collapsed and the brain is completely dependent on uh, collaterals formed from other sources. These days, Moya Moya is primarily diagnosed based on MRI and MRA. And these are some of the characteristic findings that suggest Moya Moya. Here you see some of the flow voids from the enlarged collateral vessels supplying the thalamus. And here you see what's described as the uh, IV sign, engorgement of, of arterioles along the outside of the brain, um, which uh, is a very reliable indicator that someone will progress and needs treatment of their moya moya. Some of the characteristics uh, of the patients that uh, show up with moya moya include the, the, uh, a preponderance uh, for females developing moya moya. Two to one in some of the uh, Asian countries and uh, in the U United States, but in some European countries uh, the ratio is even higher in favor of females to males. We see moya moya uh, within families in about 15 percent of cases. We see uh, moya moya occurring in the Japanese population, about one new case in every 200,000 people per year. In America, the incidence is about one order of magnitude lower than that, so it's much more rare here, but certainly we see a lot of it. And then there are two peaks uh, at which moya moya typically presents, one in children around ages 5 to 10, and then one in uh, middle-aged adults around the age of 40. There are certain associated conditions where we see moya moya more frequently. Of those uh, include sickle cell disease, um, trisomy 21, neurofibromatosis type 1, a history of cranial irradiation. The way that moya moya presents is most typically through ischemia or lack of blood flow to the brain that in, is fitting with uh, the nature of the disease. And here we see about 50 to 75 percent of the time, uh, patients uh, first discover that they have moya moya uh, after they've ha suffered a stroke or a transient ischemia, ischemic attack, TIA. The other presentations uh, are a little bit more rare, but in adults, sometimes patients can present with a hemorrhage um, because the uh, collateral vessels that form in response to moya moya are a little bit more fragile than 
the native uh, arterial trunks. And so uh, some of these vessels can hemorrhage with time and uh, high blood pressure. A little bit less common, some patients will present with seizures or headaches or even uh, psychiatric uh, diagnoses, which were uh, given in response to mental status changes or personality changes, but in fact were related to the moya moya. What we do know about uh, the hemorrhagic presentation is that, there, uh, that the risk is that the patient will uh, have another bleed, and that happens about 37% of the time, but with uh, surgery for treatment, uh, we can reduce that risk to single-digit percentages. What happens uh, in patients with moya moya if left untreated? Uh, there are a few population studies to show us that the uh, disease is almost always progressive uh, and that can, it can lead to severe strokes, uh, to neurocognitive decline, to motor deficits um, in anywhere between two-thirds to 100% of patients uh, in, based on which uh, series you look at. Now. Um, we find that with treatment, we can reduce those risks uh, of symptomatic progression to, again, single-digit percentages. So dramatic improvements in uh, the natural history of this disease with treatment. Um, and I'm going to talk next about some of the treatment options. When we talk about treatment for moya moya, it's entirely surgical. There's no uh, proven benefit to medical therapy for moya moya at all. The surgical options include direct bypass or indirect bypass, very generally. Indirect bypass includes uh, several different permutations of similar operations, uh, whereas uh, the direct bypass is uh, most typically a, um, a uniform operation, which I'll describe in pictures in just a minute. This is an example of uh, the most widespread uh, indirect bypass technique used in America. It's called a Peelson angiosis and it was pioneered by uh, uh, Dr. Scott, who is at Boston Children's. It in involves using the superficial temple artery, which is the artery that um, provides the pulse just in front of your ear. You isolate that artery here, open up a small window of bone, and lay that artery uh, directly onto the surface of the brain, opening up some of the tissue on top of those arteries in order to allow uh, the body to create new blood vessels supplied through the superficial temporal artery uh, on its own. This process takes a few months to occur. This is an example of a uh, direct bypass technique, which is um, different in that you take the same artery but Instead of just laying it on top of the vessels, the, you sew it directly into the recipient vessel. So you choose one of the uh, MCA branches on the surface of the brain, and uh, you open up a hole in it, and then you sew that vessel directly into the side of, that, uh, of the recipient vessel. Direct bypass has the theoretical benefit of providing immediate flow augmentation to your brain. Now, how do these work? Well, as it turns out, they both work really well. Um, two of the centers in the United States with a great deal of experience in treating moya moya uh, have published their results, as you see here. Uh, Dr. Scott and Dr. Smith's group at Boston Children's have shown uh, exceptionally good um, uh, reductions in uh, neurocognitive decline in children long term. and. We found that uh, patients, even presenting with disability, only suffer from a uh, very mild disability uh, uh, the majority of the time. Most importantly, um, it minimizes the risk of future stroke. Here are the results uh, published by Dr. Steinberg's group at Stanford. And similarly, you find that, um, that even though they favor a direct bypass uh, technique, uh, their patients also are overwhelmingly free of uh, ischemic symptoms uh, in the long term after treatment. They experience a significant improvement in quality of life and 
an ex uh, exceedingly low rate of uh, stroke and death after surgical treatment. Here at UCLA, our results uh, are uh, similar. We have an approximately 95% overall success rate with treatment of Moya Moya disease with judicious uh, recommendations of both the indirect and the direct bypasses depending on your particular case. There are certain questions uh, that remain to be answered uh, regarding Moya Moya. One of those is, well, which risk factors or indices might best predict the development of Moya Moya or stroke? Here at UCLA, we're involved in a, a large-scale project uh, looking at extreme phenotype uh, genome sequencing to identify uh, genes that uh, might predict the development of Moya Moya in uh, patients who are uh, at higher risk. Uh, for developing uh, this disease. What are the absolute benefits of surgery? Well, as I've shown today, the natural history of uh, Moya Moya is extremely poor. Um, uh, over two-thirds of patients are expected to uh, suffer severe decline in neurocognitive function, in motor deficits, and uh, experience strokes. Whereas, if you treat them surgically, we can expect um, 80 to 90 percent uh, good results um, uh, nationwide. Unfortunately, that leaves us in a position where we've never had a direct comparison between uh, non-surgical and surgical management, but at this point it'd be unethical to do such a study. Which surgical technique is best for which situation? We've seen excellent results with both indirect and direct bypass techniques, and at uh, this point, both have been proven very effective. Here at UCLA, we uh, use an individualized process to uh, recommend uh, these uh, procedures uh, for each individual patient uh, as appropriate for your situation. And what rates for poor surgical outcome are expected? These procedures are uh, safe, uh, particularly if done at a high volume center, such as at UCLA. Uh, in a recent study, it was uh, shown that patients are uh, ex exceedingly more likely to uh, go home without any in-hospital complications if their procedures are uh, done at uh, high-volume centers that treat a lot of Moya Moya. In summary, the natural history of Moya Moya includes high risks of stroke, neurocognitive decline, and motor deficits. However, bypass surgery is very effective and is the only effective treatment for this disease, uh, significantly uh, improving rates of neurologic decline uh, and motor deficits and essentially halting the risk of uh, stroke. Finally, uh, direct bypass has theoretical benefits uh, uh, over indirect bypass, but its superiority remains unproven. Okay, so we have some questions here. Is Moya Moya hereditary? Well, Moya Moya is hereditary in about 15% of cases. In the other 85, it happens sporadically, meaning that there's no hereditary basis. When should a child be treated for Moya Moya? Well, Moya Moya is responsible for about 22% of children presenting with strokes. So it's an important part of the workup. When a child presents with symptoms attributable to Moya Moya and angiographic findings suggestive of the development of Moya Moya disease or Moya Moya syndrome, such as a Suzuki grade two angi angiographic appearance or the IV sign on MRI, then that patient we know is very likely to benefit from surgical treatment. My child has a headache. Should he or she be evaluated for Moya Moya? Well, headaches happen a lot, but it is uh, also a rare presentation of Moya Moya. And we do know that treatment of headaches related to Moya Moya uh, is often very effective uh, in relieving those headaches. If you suspect that your child uh, has Moya Moya due to headaches and the appearance of other neurologic symptoms, such as weakness on one side of the body or face, speech difficulties that come and go, or 
uh, neurocognitive decline, then your child should be evaluated by a pediatric neurologist. And in the workup for that uh, patient, in the appropriate setting, he or she may order uh, an MRI to look for moya moya. Aspirin has been recommended to me uh, for treatment of my moya moya. Is this appropriate? I will very frequently use aspirin in order to bridge a patient to surgical treatment for moya moya. Uh, I find it effective in the short term, but we do know that on the, if we wait for surgery on the order of years, uh, just utilizing aspirin, that about half of patients will still progress uh, with uh, strokes and other symptoms attributable to their moya moya. And so I will not recommend aspirin as long-term treatment for patients with moya moya. Thank you for your questions.